Welcome everyone to my channel that is Fast and Easy Maths, which is dedicated to give you tips and tricks related to mathematics. So students, if you're new to my video, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell button besides it so that you get notified whenever I push up a new video. So students, today we are going to discuss tricky questions which are asked in GMAT, okay? And students, you will see if your basics of these topics are very very clear then you will have absolutely no issues in solving these kind of questions okay also students i would like to remind all of you all that in such kind of videos i also mention a question which is similar to the questions which i have solved in the video itself okay so you guys will solve that question and let me know your answers in the comment section below and i will let you know whether you are right or wrong okay so let's start with the first question the sum of third and the 15th element of an arithmetic progression is equal to the sum of 6th 11th and the 13th elements of the same progression then which of the element of the series should necessarily be zero now the problem over here is when you look at the option you have an option of none so whenever you have an option of none things get a bit tricky because then it becomes very difficult to eliminate the options okay so let's first think that the first term is x okay so my third term t3 the formula of terms is nothing but t n is nothing but a plus n minus 1 into d okay so my first term is a which is x in this case v and the nth term which is 3 so i write 3 minus 1 into d so i can write this as nothing but x plus 2d similarly i'll write the 15th term has nothing but x plus 14d. Similarly, my 6th term is nothing but x plus 5d. The 11th term will be x plus 10d. And, and the 13th term will be x plus 12d. Okay. So they have said that the sum of 3rd and the 15th term is equal to the sum of 6th, 11th and 13th term. Okay. So I can say that T3 plus T5 is equal to T6 plus T11 plus T13. So write that down. X plus 2D which is T3 plus X plus 4, 14D is equals to 6th term which is x plus 5d, 11th term which is x plus 10d and 13th term which is x plus 12d. Okay, so here I am right having 2x plus 16d is equals to plus 15 plus 12 is equals to 27 d so here i'm shifting all the terms on this side so 4x minus 2x plus 27d minus 16d is equals to 0 so i am getting sorry this is 3x so 3x i'm getting so 3x minus 2x i'm getting x plus 27d minus 16d i'm getting 11d is equals to 0 so now students, you are getting x plus 11d is equals to 0. And if you have noticed, for 15th term, I am getting x plus 14d. 6th term, I am getting x plus 5d. So whatever is the term, my d is one number less than that. So here, can I say, my term should be t12. Because only then x plus 11d will satisfy the formula of a plus n minus 1 into d. Correct? So, here I can say that my final answer is the 12th term which is equals to 0. So, students as you saw this sum had so much of things to be written about. But when you actually solved, you had nothing to calculate. Okay. So, many times they give you a big question but the answers are very very easy only if you have correct understanding of all these basic formulas. Okay. Now, let's look at our next question. 
But before beginning with this, students, if you like the way I'm explaining, then please go ahead and hit the like button because that gives me tremendous amount of encouragement to keep making these kind of videos. Okay, so let's start with this question. How many integers from 1 to 50 have a remainder of 1 when divided by 3? Okay, so here we will first write down the numbers which are which gives us a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. So let's start by 1. 1 is not divisible by 3. 2 is not divisible. 3 is divisible but the remainder is 0 and 4 when divided I get a remainder of 1. So then now the next number which would be that is 7 when I divide 7 by 6. 7 by 3 my answer is my remainder is 1. Then can I say when I divide 10 by 3 my answer is Again, my remainder is 1. So, so on. So, now let's see what happens when I divide 3. When I divide 50 by 3, I get a remainder of 2, which I don't want. So, now let's see for 49. When I divide 49 by 3, my remainder is 1. So, can I say my last term is 49? And can I say this is an AP with the difference of 3, right? 7 minus 4 is 3. 10 minus 4 is also 3 and my first term should be 4. So we need to find how many integers. So we need to find what n, correct? So my last term which is 49 is equal to the first term which is 4 plus n minus 1 into the difference which is 3, correct? So when I take 4 on the other side, I get 49 minus 4 that is 45 is equal to n minus 1 into 3. Dividing both the sides by 3, can I say n minus 1 is equal to 45 divided by 3 is 15. Therefore, n is equal to 15 plus 1, which is 16. So, my answer is 16 in this case. Now, let's look at the next question. So, the next question is, what is the sum of all positive integers up to 1000, which are divisible by 5, but not by 2? So, you need to find numbers which are divisible by 5 but not by 2. So, I can say 5 is divisible by 5 but not by 2. Similarly, 10 is also divisible by 5 but it is divisible by 2. So, I can't take 10. Then the next number which I can take is 15. Then the next term I can take is 25. Then 35. So on. Can I say I can take it up till 995. I can't take 1000 because that is also divisible by 2. So again, if you see over here, there is an arithmetic progression with the difference of 15 minus 5 is 10. 25 minus 15 is also 10. 35 minus 25 is also 20, 10. My first term is what? 5. And my last term is 995. So using the formula of last term, which is Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 into D, so I can say Tn which is 995 is equals to A which is 5 plus N minus 1 into D which is 10. Now I take this 5 on this side. So subtracting both the sides by 5 I get 990 is equals to N minus 1 into 10. Now I want to get rid of this 10. So dividing both sides by 10 I get 9. 990 divided by 10 is nothing but 99 is equals to 9 minus n minus 1. And since I want to find the value of n, I will take this my negative n on this side, so which becomes 99 plus 1 is equals to n. Therefore, n is equals to 100. Right? But this is not your end. Okay? You need to find the sum. Okay? So, you need to use the formula of sn, which is equals to n upon 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Correct? So, your n is 100 upon 2 into 2 into a which is 5. So, that is 10 plus n which is 100 minus 1 is 99 into d which is 10. So, 100 divided by 2 is nothing but 50 into 10 plus 990 is 1000. So, 50 into 1000 gets you 50,000. So, I can say your my answer is 50,000. Now, let's look at the next question. A number is selected at random 
from 1 to 30, what is the probability that the number is multiple of 3 or 30? See, students, whenever you have an or, you will be taking the probability of each of them and adding them. So, what is the probability of numbers from 1 to 30 being multiple of 3? Can I say I have 10 numbers which are divisible by, which are multiples of 3 when I take numbers from 1 to 30, correct? Because I simply divided 3 by 30. So, I have basically 2 numbers, sorry. So, I have 2 numbers which are multiples of 13 from the range of 1 to 30. So, I can, since the denominators are same, I can directly add them. So, I get 12 upon 30. Both these numbers go in 6 tables. So, 6 twos are and 6 fives are. So, my final answer is 2 upon 5. Now, as promised, I want you all to write down, I want you all to solve this question. A number is selected at random from 1 to 20. What is the probability that it is a multiple of 4 and 9. So students, that's it for this video. Before signing off, I would like to remind all of you all that if you like the way I'm explaining, then please hit the like button so that I can keep making these kind of videos more and more. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.